Hello, Ms. Pneumatic here. Today, we're going to talk about booster valves or booster regulator. We'll study what they are, how they work, and what we need to be careful about when using a booster valve. If you're curious about booster valves, or if you're considering using them, be sure to watch the full video. Now, stories of booster valves in the words of Ms. Pneumatic. Let's begin right away. As you can guess from the word booster, a booster valve is a device with which you can partially raise pressure. But what does partially raising pressure mean here? To explain it, let me give you a quick example. We'll assume that one air compressor, one main regulator, and three pneumatic cylinders are connected together. Here, the air compressor has pressure of 0.9 megapascal and the main regulator is set at 0.5 megapascal. This means that 0.5 megapascal of pressure is supplied to the three pneumatic cylinders. Now, what if I want to use one of these pneumatic cylinders at 0.7 megapascal? By installing a booster valve in the middle here, the supplied pressure of 0.5 megapascal can be partially raised to be able to supply pressure of 0.7 megapascal to a pneumatic cylinder. If a booster valve is not installed, either separate air compressor and piping, or a regulator needs to be installed, which is a hassle. As you can see, a booster valve is a device that helps partially raise pressure in a convenient manner in case you need high pressure only for certain processes on a production line equipped with a pneumatic system. Let's look at an actual booster valve of KCC called the KPBV series to learn about the terminology of various parts of a booster valve. First, there is a pressure control regulator at the top part of a booster valve. This pressure control regulator helps control the output pressure and it is able to control the state of locking and loosening. There are also two types of pressure gauges in a booster valve. One displays the input pressure and the other shows the output pressure. This booster valve consists of in port into which air is supplied, out port port leading to an actuator, and exhaust ports through which the air used to raise pressure gets released. And finally, there is a bracket at the bottom for the installation of the part. Now, why are there exhaust ports to discharge air installed on a booster valve? Let's study about this more in detail by examining the principle of a booster valve. I'm going to explain the principle of a booster valve using a simple circuit diagram this time. Let's take a brief look at the inside of a booster valve. First of all, there is a piston, and to the right side of this piston are drive chamber A and boost chamber A, as well as drive chamber B and boost chamber B on the other side. At this time, 0.4 megapascal of the supply pressure is inserted into the booster valve, and let's assume that the booster valve is set at a pressure of 0.8 megapascal, or twice as much as the supply pressure. Once the supply pressure enters the inside of the booster valve, it is first supplied to boost chambers A and B through a check valve, and 0.4 megapascal of pressure is identically applied to both boost chambers. Now, a portion of the compressed air supplied flows into drive chamber B through a transfer valve shown on the screen and the fine structure of the booster valve. Because of the pressure in drive chamber B and boost chamber A, the piston moves to the left, which gradually reduces the volume of boost chamber B. Since volume and pressure are inversely proportional to each other, the pressure in boost chamber B also increases little by little, and this increased pressure gets discharged as output pressure through the check valve. Also, once the piston reaches the end of a stroke, it activates the transfer valve marked here, and the state of the booster valve switches to the one you see on the following screen. If the transfer valve is switched by the piston, the air inside drive chamber B gets discharged to the outside to vacate the chamber. A portion of the supply pressure is also supplied to drive chamber A by the transfer valve at the top of the image. And this time, the piston positioned toward the boost chamber A side now gets pushed to the right by the pressure of drive chamber A and boost chamber B. Therefore, the volume of boost chamber A decreases, which then raises the pressure of this chamber little by little. And the increased pressure of boost chamber A will be released as output pressure through the check valve. 
As these steps are repeated speedily and continuously, the pressure being released through the check valve gradually rises. But once the output pressure is raised to a predefined pressure, no more pressure is going to be outputted by check valve, and the booster valve will stop working because of pressure equilibrium. And if the output pressure decreases, the booster valve will be activated again to raise the output pressure to the predefined level. This way, a booster valve is able to raise the pressure of compressed air by air only without any source of power. A booster valve is able to raise pressure conveniently by air alone without any special power source. So in case high pressure is needed for only some of the processes, it is extremely simple to establish these processes by using a booster valve. A booster valve can be used alone and independently, but generally used together with an air tank. And this is related to the volume flow rate of air supplied to processes. When using a booster valve alone, only the volume flow rate of the valve itself can be supplied to processes. Therefore, in case of large consumption of air by the actuator, it will be difficult to operate the actuator in an efficient manner. If an air tank is installed in this case to collect in advance the air whose pressure has been raised by a booster valve, it will be possible to supply compressed air to high pressure processes more efficiently. So, if there is a large amount of air to be used in high-pressure processes, it is advantageous to choose an air tank with a large capacity. An air tank used together with a booster valve stores high-pressure compressed air. So each of these air tanks has to acquire a national safety certification individually. Here, the yellow part, called safety valve, is installed at the very top of an air tank. Once pressure rises above the certified pressure assigned to a specific air tank, a safety valve releases air to prevent any rise in pressure inside the air tank. Each air tank comes with a safety certificate and this must be kept and stored separately. And an air tank is also subject to the first safety inspection by a safety inspection agency within three years of the date its installation was finished at the work site. Please note that after the initial check, safety inspections are performed regularly once every two years. First of all, in order to use a booster valve efficiently, it is good to install a regulator between the booster valve and the actuator in a high-pressure process. Let's say that pressure of 0.7 MPa is needed in a cylinder of a high-pressure process. Instead of adjusting the pressure control handle of the booster valve to 0.7 MPa, it is more efficient in the process to raise it to the maximum pressure and set the regulator in the middle at 0.7 MPa. If the pressure of a booster valve is set at 0.7 MPa, it will only operate until it reaches the pressure of 0.7 MPa, and operating efficiency is up to that point only. But if the intermediate regulator is set at 0.7 MPa, and the pressure of the booster valve is set to maximum, the booster valve will operate with the maximum efficiency that the device is capable of and discharge compressed air. At this time, the surplus pressure is stored in an air tank. Therefore, in case of large consumption of air by the actuator, it is possible to run a process more efficiently by installing a regulator like this, since the booster valve can continuously produce compressed air to the maximum. Secondly, a booster valve is a compressor that uses air as its power, so it consumes a great amount of air, in which case the import pipes need to be large to be able to supply a sufficient volume of air to the booster valve. Because a booster valve uses air as power, efficient use of the product can be ensured when supplying a sufficient amount of air to the booster valve. Typically, the volume of air supplied for an import is more than twice as much as the amount used at the outport. And for the KPBV series, the pipes on the supply side and outport side are set to be larger than 10 PI and 8 PI respectively. Third, since a booster valve has strong pressure on the outport side, installing a hose capable of withstanding strong pressure at the outport is recommended. Since the instantaneous pressure of compressed air, whose pressure has been raised by a booster valve, can rupture a tube, the recommended material for the hose on the outport side is nylon, which is sturdy against pressure, rather than the common urethane. Fourth, after a process is finished, the compressed air of the booster valve and air tank should be released completely. A booster valve raises the pressure of compressed air by the interaction between the supplied air and piston. If air is not removed after the process ends, the air continues to push the piston inside the booster valve, which will accumulate stress. 
Therefore, it is good to release all of the compressed air inside a device after a process finishes. In addition, when using a booster valve and an air tank connection, we recommend using the out port of the air tank, not the booster valve, to minimize the pulsation phenomenon. Please take note of this when using a booster valve in connection with an air tank. Finally, I'd like to wrap up today's video by looking at a quick example of a booster valve usage. First, it is a case wherein the size of a cylinder cannot be increased despite the insufficient cylinder force. The force of a cylinder is proportional to the supply pressure and area of a piston. So, to increase the force of a cylinder, you can simply use a cylinder with a larger piston. But if it is difficult to raise the caliber of a cylinder, the force can still be increased without a switch of cylinders by raising the supply pressure with a booster valve. Also, as I mentioned before, in case high pressures are needed only in certain parts of a factory production line, booster valves can be installed only on high pressure lines to run high pressure machines while maintaining low pressure overall. As you can see, a booster valve helps partially raise pressure in a similar manner without any special device. Today, we examined booster valves in general. KCC, in collaboration with Ms. Pneumatic, produces a variety of hydraulic and pneumatic products in addition to booster valves. If you want to find out more about hydraulic and pneumatic products, be sure to visit KCC anytime, and Ms. Pneumatic will come back next time with another hydraulic and pneumatic video. Thank you! Ms. Pneumatic's Easy Pneumatic Works with KCC, a company specializing in hydraulic and pneumatic manufacturing.